I drove two blocks and all my phone out. <laughs> because we've got so many used to the things of this world. Don't you see? Remember one time I was preaching about that movie, I'm gonna go fast in this, about the Matrix? And I said, when I watched that movie, who watched the Matrix? Right? I'm just using that as an example. Because I look at things and I look at it for today's life. It's like that. The devil has you in the matrix. Everything you see, you think that's it. No. But really, you live in a lie. When you know the word of the Lord, then you see what things are, what they really are. And that's when, when they show what the things were really were, that they were being controlled by machines. Amen. We're being controlled by the devil. What is the devil's tools? He use anybody, anything, right? The media, the television, you need this dress, my sister. This fits you perfect. It's the truth. You need this makeup. It's the truth. And what do we do? We go run to the store to buy it. There is a... Am I right or wrong? It's got so bad that for men, you need this pill. You can't... Let's speak the truth. You see? So we are enticed. The devil enticed it that you need that you need. You need this drug. You can't make it without this drug. You go on Looney Tunes. So you gotta take this drug. That's a lie. You see, all this bombardment is coming at you. That's what I call the matrix. So they're throwing all this stuff and we get set up. We need this, we need that. You need this. Well, I'm gonna say Cadillac, I love Cadillac. <laughs> But listen, you need this Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say this. I think it's good. You look good in it. When your friends see you coming down the road. Ooh. But they don't tell you, you gotta get into debt to get it and you can't afford it and we buy things that we know we can't afford. We'll give you 10 weeks of payment, no interest. So what happens? We fall in the trap all the time. Amen. I don't know why I went there, but I need to <laughs> But that's the truth. Amen? Amen. <laughs> you need this Mercedes. You're going to look good. Then they show, they show somebody driving it and looking all cool with their head. You say, oh, that's me. That's me. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know you can't supply it. That first week, you cruising. Yes, Lord. I'm in my Mercedes. Then when the bills come and that payment comes, then you're like, oh, Lord. Then you start running the car. Right. God didn't tell you about that because you need to stop and pray. Say, God, do I really need this Mercedes? God won't tell you no. Ooh, you can't afford it. Which, most white you get a Mercedes. But they got that three easy landway payment. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that happens to us time and time again. And then when it comes to give to God, I can't give God. I got to pay that Mercedes then. So, what did the devil just do? The Bible said, don't put no idol before me. You just put that Mercedes Benz as an idol before God. That's the truth. That is the truth. Amen. That becomes an idol. I know you're really going to get on me now. Well, I got to get, you don't know, Pastor. I got to get, oh, I ain't going to go. <laughs> I gotta get my hair done, I gotta get my nails done. I gotta get my feet done. <laughs> so you wind up in it, you know what I'm thinking of the truth. You go there and what is it? The Chinese, ah, oh, I saw her, yeah. Fifty dollars, fifty dollars, fifty dollars. And they show up and she just counting the money, yeah. She doing your name, yeah. Because what? They're getting paid. 
That's it. Now, what happens is you're putting an idol before God. Not to say we have an assessor. Everybody needs a car here. I worked for the bus system for a couple of years, so I know that they run from a certain time to a certain time, and then on the weekend, you're stuck and there's no other transportation. I understand that. That's, that's good enough. And God understands that. But God knows. And you know. You can search your heart and you know. You shouldn't get that. Or you shouldn't do that. And when it comes to God, put Him first. All the time. All the time. When you do that, the Bible says that those desires that you have in your heart, He will give you. What did I just read? Do your part, He'll do His part. But we say no. Now, you go to church. I'm being real now. You go to church, you got your hair all nice, you got your eyes, blood, you got your feet looking good, you got it in your shoes. Nobody can see it, but you know it's there. You got your nails all done. The basket come around. Next week, go. So you go home. You go home, and then what happens? God, I tell you, God, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. You go home, my life's not on. My water's not on. Oh, wow. Oh. What happened now? You forgot about the light bill and the water bill. Oh, wow. The Lord, the Lord speaking to the empty of them. Okay, right. <laughs> Not the Lord does that purposely, but the Lord is just going like this. Good head. Now you go home. Now you got your nails done and everything. Now you can't see your nails, your eyes. You can't see your feet. You can't see period. <laughs> It's the truth. And I'm watching my video. I'm joking, but it's the truth. Looking all good in the dark. <laughs> and you be singing all by myself. <laughs> Lord, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. And we get warned time and time again, and we still don't get it. I don't understand people sometimes, but let me say it. Now, King Solomon warned us that if we are to be ruled by our circumstances, we will never solve. <laughs> King Solomon said and warned us that if we rule by our circumstances, we will never solve. That's the truth. Because we're worried about so many things in our lives. And it's, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Because I said, if we're Christians and we know the word of God, follow the direction. I talked about that. I mean, I'm trying to make it simple. Remember the unit when we had the office on US-1? I keep bringing that back. Because it seems I got a slam dunk you all in the head. And myself. Not only me, you know, everybody here and those watching my video. I want to empower you even as I'm empowering myself. And I said, Lord, forgive me. I bought a desk. Came in a box, we looked at the picture. I don't need the directions. I put that desk together in no time. I'm good. You see, I rely on me. When I put the table together, I tighten those screws so tight. I looked at the picture, I said, wait a minute, this is supposed to be on this side, this is on the other side, and I got extra stuff here. So now I'm saying, oh Lord, I look at the direction, I put it backwards. And I had extra nuts hanging around it, you know, the screws and all that. So I had to take another hour and a half now suffering because I put it so tight to put it back. Something that should have took me 15 minutes if I would have used the direction, I said I'll do it on my own. And what happened? I wanted to pay the price. That's what I have to start today. It's the truth. I tell you, I don't want, I, sometimes I know people go, I ain't going to get good emails on this one. Anyway, Ecclesiastic 11, verse 4. Whoever watches the wind will not plant, and whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. Amen. When the brother got out the boat, he saw Jesus walking on the water, walking to him. He looked at Jesus. He walked on the water. Just like Jesus. I want to go out there, Jesus, with you. He walked on the water. But what did he do? He started looking towards the left because the wind was blowing. So he took his eyes off Jesus. What happened? 
He bent with the wind. That's what scripture is saying. If we look at our circumstances, you see what I'm saying? And we concentrate on our circumstances, then what happens is we're going to bend and we're going to fall. And we're not going to sow because we're looking at the circumstances. Not knowing that he is a great provider. He just said in his word that I will not only want you to plant the seed, I will supply the seed for you. Also, I said there in my sermon that we should be good stewards of what we have. He's trying to teach us something. When our children, I tell my children all the time, you don't know yet. So live it up now. Because there's going to be a time when you're going to live by yourself and you're going to take responsibility to pay carnal, to pay life, to buy food, to buy rent, to buy to put clothes on yourself. Amen. You got to pay taxes. I got to pay taxes. You got to go work with somebody. Amen. That's the truth. Prepare yourself now. That's why the church is important and receive and put this in your spirit. Amen. Bible says to be a good steward. It's okay to look good. I like looking good. But I'm not going to put my clothes or car or my house over God. Because then it says in the Word that I'm idolizing that. I'm putting God before my life. Amen. That's the truth. I'm broke. But you know what? I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm doing what God told me to do. That gives me joy. Money don't give me joy. Money is just a tool that I use to, to be able to bless. You see, when you start looking at that way, then God will provide. And the time of need, you don't even have to ask Him. He will provide it. He's done it to me and so many times and so many people here can testify that God has blessed them. When the time comes. God is always on time. He might not be on our time schedule, but He's always on time. Amen. Now we must so regularly, regularly, amen, into every good works, the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul stated that when he will reap whatever we sow in what? Galatians chapter 6. Verse 6 and 9, who has it? Speak it loud. That him that is taught in the word communicate unto them that teacheth in all good things. Yes. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Yes. Especially unto them of the household of faith. Amen. Is that the truth or is that not just the truth? Galatians is what? 6 and 9. 6 through 9 I read out. 6 through 9. What did you write? Let him who, who for he that soweth there you are. Right. Sorry. For he who has soul to his flesh. Now I'm talking about your nails and your. <laughs> Go ahead, read it. <laughs> she having a good time over there. Go ahead. Say what? To where? Yes. So and let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap oh, if we faint not. If we faint not. I'm gonna read it in this. <laughs> Amen. So let him who has taught the word share in all good things Amen. with him who teaches. Amen. Do not be deceived by God. It is not marked for everyone. A man sows that he will also reap. What a man sows, he will also reap. For he who sows to his what? Flesh. Will of the flesh will reap that. Exactly, right? Corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, the will of the Spirit reaps everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good for due 
believe in, you will reap 